this is Tim DeLeon from Focus First, and this short tutorial is on how to select data on the MLS data form. You will be selecting data on your MLS data form to create scattergrams and price lines. I'll be doing this tutorial on the Mac, but it works the same on a PC. If there's any differences, I'll be sure to point them out. So let's take a look at the MLS data form. When you look at this sheet, what you're going to find is that all the data you export is on this one sheet. This is all the data that was used to create several of your other graphs. When you read in your export file, which was downloaded from your MLS, most of the visual pricing system graphs are created automatically. However, your scattergram and price lines are not. We don't create those graphs for you automatically because we believe you will want to put a subset of the data on those graphs. Be aware that there's also an active data sheet, and it's very similar to the MLS data sheet, and it works the same way. The active data sheet is located in the positioning section. The key difference between these two sheets is that the active data sheet will only show the properties that are, under, that are for sale or those properties that are under contract. Other than that, they work the same way. The active data sheet is primarily used for what we refer to as a positioning function. That's where you compare the subject property to other properties that are for sale. That's why you only find properties that are for sale or that are under contract on this sheet. Also, since you only have properties for sale on this sheet, you won't be doing your price lines on this sheet, so there's no price line options. The way you select properties on this sheet is exactly the same as their MLS data sheet. So let's go back to that sheet. When using the MLS data form, you'll want to make sure that your scattergram tab is active. This will give you easy access to all the tools that you need to do your scattergram and price lines. To create your scattergram and price lines, you will need to select the data under the respective column. This column is for scattergrams, and this column is for price lines. The data you select will then be used to create your graphs. Now, there's two ways to select data. If you're familiar with these properties, all you have to do is drag your mouse over the boxes that you want to select, and then using the buttons in the scattergram ribbon control, select the Select Properties option. As you see, once they're selected, the box is checked. You can also unselect these properties by using the Unselect Properties option. Of course, you can do the same operation for the price line column. The second way to select data is by using the Selection menu. Using the Create Graph option in the Scattergram Ribbon Control, you open up the Create Graph Options dialog box. This box contains both Scattergram and Price Line options. The left side is for Scattergrams, and the right side is for the Price Line options. Let's use the Select data for the Scattergrams. This is a Scattergram filter. This will allow you to select all the properties that match the selection. The default is to select all the sold properties that have sold in the last six months. In most cases, this will work perfect for you. In some cases, you may wish to choose all the properties that have sold in the last year. And you can do that by modifying this date right here. As you can see, you can filter based on the year built, the price range. You can also choose to include properties that are for sale or properties that are withdrawn as well. Whatever you filter on here will be the selection once you press the Select Properties button. For this example, Let's just look at the properties that have sold in the last six months. As you see, once you make the selection, several properties are selected for us. As you look closely at the data, you will see we have several floor plans that have been selected as a result of the filter. When you create your pricing scattergram, many times you'll want to restrict the floor plans that you put on your scattergram. For example, if the subject property has multiple levels, you may not want to include one-story properties. One of the features that can help you do this easily is the ability to sort on each of these columns. To sort, all you have to do is double click. Once you double click, it will sort on all the data based on the column that you double click on. If you double click again, it resorts in the opposite direction. Once we have sort based on style, we can then come back to the scattergram column and sort based on the properties that we have selected. Now we can easily remove the properties that don't quite match, and from there we can create our scattergram.
Now let's take a closer look at the Priceline Selection tool. To do so, we select the Create Graph option, and from there we select the Select Data button. Now we have the Priceline Selection filter. When you look at the Priceline filter, you'll notice that this slide looks just like the Scattergram filter, and it works the same way too. The right hand is really different. Here's where you can select data based on the size of the property. We find that price lines are most effective when you put homes that are of comparable size. Usually we suggest that, that they are within plus or minus 10%. If you have a lot of properties, you might want to get a little closer and select 7%. Let's put 3,000 here, and you can see we automatically calculate plus or minus 10% to enter the range right here. Now, if you want to, you can also make a change and override any of these range values that you'd like. That way you can include specific properties that you may want to include. Now, when you look at the default, you will see the default is to include all status activity for the last six months. And once you put the size in, you can find all the properties that are comparable size. Then to select properties, all you have to do is click the Select Properties button and all the properties that are selected are now selected under the Priceline column. Okay, we've gone through selecting properties for both scattergrams and Pricelines. The next step is to create your graphs, both the scattergram and Priceline. And let's do that in another video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to watch some of our other videos. And don't forget to press the like button below.